Right now, the housing market has been crazy, but trying to build a house has been just as difficult. What home builders say some of the biggest issues are in the industry right now. Also, a DNR board member whose term ended almost a year ago says he's not leaving unless the state Supreme Court tells him to, what it could mean for other appointees. And baseball is back. What the Brewers are saying after the players accept the owner's offer ending the lockout. Welcome to News 3 Now at 6. We start tonight with breaking news. The Madison woman charged with helping two Columbia Correctional Institution inmates after they escaped from prison is found not guilty. And Catherine Wooderick was arrested on April 28th of 2020. She was facing two counts of escape as a party to a crime. Officials with the Columbia County Sheriff's Office said she picked up two inmates from the point at Piggly Wiggly shortly after their escape. Both escapees were later arrested in Illinois. Again, though, Wooderick has been found not guilty. Jurors deliberated today for less than an hour. Housing is approaching a crisis stage in Dane County. News 3 Now has covered the struggle to find affordable housing downtown, but what about single family dwellings anywhere in Dane County? It is a crucial piece of the housing puzzle, and if you're looking to build a new home in 2022, well, it could be a wild ride. There's so many words you could sum it up with, but chaotic is probably one of them that we use a lot of. 2021 was a year that tested home builders and home buyers in Dane County. So many ups and downs, uh, product availability, uh, you know, work skilled trades. It's just insane right now. The price of lumber peaked last May, then dropped 75% by fall and has started 2022 back up to where it was last spring. Just across the board, we're seeing all product go up, you know, that 20% mark. Um, so it, it's back up and, and we're fearful of what that's going to do uh, for the, this next year. We're going to be in the same same predicament that we have been, I think. Uh, I was just kind of finding the right plan to fit the neighborhood. Brad Burrs with McFarland-based Urso Brothers Builders is the president of the Madison Area Builders Association. Open concept is huge. Their mid to high level custom homes are selling faster than they can build them. We want to get away from that basement feel. Like this one in Fitchburg, a great home next door, sold before hitting the market. For builders, two familiar challenges, the supply chain. They, you know, they're trying to get shipments to us. Well, we get them to port and we're backlogged there. And then, I mean, it just goes on and on the drivers. You know, we don't have enough drivers to get things places. And beyond that, like many industries, they need workers. Supply chain needs to be fixed, materials need to be fixed. But similarly, if we had the labor solved, that would be one of the big five key factors for pricing that would come down. More workers means more houses. We've talked to builders who have said that if they had the labor, they could do twice as many homes. So you look at it and you think, all right, if there was more homes, the surplus, then we'd have less of that demand, you know, that's really crushing the pricing and really making things in Madison unaffordable. While that's a long-term solution to ease the county's housing crisis, eventually putting new homes within reach for more people, those who can build now still are doing so. Last year saw the most new housing starts in Dane County in 15 years. It's amazing how much chaos there is, but yet the builders and the industry keeps kind of overcoming that chaos. As the area continues to grow faster than any other part of Wisconsin. Then we come into the master with a nice ensuite. Builders know the challenge that lies ahead. We need 200,000 more housing units in Dane County by 2050. And we are well below that at this point to hitting that number. You go back 10, 15, 20 years, and every year you could say, well, I'll just hold out until the prices go down. Well, that just doesn't happen. Lawler and Burrs say staying in constant communication with your builder and understanding also the fluctuating prices, that is vital. And also understand that building a house these days due to the supply chain and labor issues, it could take much longer to complete your home. And mortgage rates are on the rise just ahead of the busy stretch. In the local real estate market of the spring, the mortgage company Freddie Mac reporting the 30-year fixed rate mortgage it averages 3.85% this week. Analysts say the war in Ukraine causing percentages to climb because of market instability and also threat of more supply shortages. Also a major factor, fears of rising inflation. Today, the government reported the consumer price index stood at 7.9% for the 12 months ending in February, a level not seen since 1982. Let's check your certified most accurate forecast. Here's Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary. It's chilly on the backyard patio. At least we're not getting any snow here in the Madison area. And as we take a look at uh, precipitation comparison, uh, you can see 
Right now, we're below normal as far as precipitation is concerned since the start of December and also a year to date. Uh, so far for this month, we're actually a little bit above normal thanks to the showers and thunderstorms that we had uh, last Saturday night. But uh, for the most part, we are looking at a precipitation deficit. And as far as snowfall is concerned, it's not your imagination. We've had about maybe 60% of our average snowfall. Normally this time of year, we should be having about 45 and a half inches of snow. And so far, we're at about tw a little over 20 25 and a half inches of snow. So again, we're not adding to that. The good news is we've got some mild weather on the way for next week. I'll have more on that in the forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Gary, thank you. A Hillsborough woman is dead after a rollover crash happened yesterday afternoon. The Richland County Sheriff's Office responded about 420 to a report of a crash on State Highway 80 near the intersection with County Highway BR. The driver, 68-year-old Catherine Slaney, was pronounced dead at the scene. Investigators determined the vehicle was northbound on the highway when it left the right shoulder of the roadway, hit a tree, came to a stop on its side in a nearby marsh. Police in Florida are looking for a hit and run suspect after a Cottage Grove woman was struck and killed while crossing the street. It happened in Fort Myers last night. Mary Reed was pronounced dead at the scene. She worked at the dive in bar on Cottage Grove Road. Bar staff leaned a bar stool up against her favorite gambling machine today in her memory. In addition, the bar's monthly meat raffle, which normally raises money for local schools, instead will raise money for Reed's family. That event set for noon on March 19th. Wisconsin's top court will soon decide whether people appointed to state government boards can stay longer than the term they were appointed for. This all started nearly a year ago when the Natural Resources Board Chair refused to step down when his term expired. Today, Supreme Court justices heard from his and the state's lawyers. Naomi Coles is outside the court with more. Naomi. Dr. Fred Prane from Wausau is still serving his expired term and he tells me he won't leave unless the courts tell him to. Now the governor long ago appointed his replacement, but the Senate hasn't confirmed her, leading to a complex array of legal arguments that we heard today about whether or not state law and court decisions give the courts the right to oust Dr. Prane. Prane told us after the hearing today he doesn't know how long he would stay if the courts come down in his favor. I decided to play it out, see where the courts go. I don't, re I don't, re I don't, I don't write laws. I react to what the laws are, and I think the laws in my favor. And when the judge, when the Supreme Court rules, I'll make a decision at that time. Now, what all this effectively accomplishes is keeping the Natural Resources Board in conservative Walker-appointed hands. And the massive implications of this court decision will be do other Walker appointees have to step down when their terms expire, especially if we're still having a divided government? That, of course, is the question the court will be deciding. All right, Naomi, thank you. One of the Democrats running against Ron Johnson made a stop at the Willie Street Co-op in Madison today. Tom Nelson, currently the county executive in Outagamie County, a position he's held since April of 2011. Nelson previously ran for lieutenant governor in 2010 and a seat in Congress in 2016. He says he's running a pro-worker and populist campaign. The important thing is that we get, we do something about corporate consolidation, whether they're meat packers or the oil industry or big ag. We are seeing that this is having a detrimental impact on working families. Nelson has made labor and economic issues a cornerstone of his campaign, with this week marking the one-year anniversary of the release of his book, One Day Stronger, detailing his efforts with the local union to save a century-old paper mill and hundreds of families supporting jobs. Another state senator is retiring, bringing the total number to six, not seeking re-election. 24-year veteran Senator Jerry Petrowski of Marathon is the third Republican to announce plans not to seek another term. Petrowski was first elected to the Assembly in 19 and then the Senate in 2012. In addition to the six senators, so far 13 members of the Assembly have announced plans not to run again in the fall. After a total of 99 days, the Major League Baseball owners' lockout of the players appears to be coming to an end. Multiple national media outlets are reporting the MLB Players Association has voted to accept the league's latest collective bargaining agreement offer. The league had previously told players a 162-game season would be saved, if they agreed to a deal before 2 p.m. today. Every home game is precious, um, and, and we're looking forward to, you know, if we have to be a little nimble in terms of when those games are going to be rescheduled or how they're rescheduled, we'll pivot, we'll adapt. Um, they'll, they'll make sure those, those games are meaningful, hopefully, for the team on the field and, and exciting for the fans. And 
Players could begin reporting to spring training as early as tomorrow, and free agency could resume as early as tonight if both sides ratify the new agreement. It is believed baseball's new opening day will be April 7th, and that's just about a week after the original scheduled opening date. Coming up as the cost of fuel continues to rise, AAA giving out some tips to make your gas last a little longer. Plus, as the war in Ukraine continues, a local church is pitching in to help those living thousands of miles away. Everyone's a winner during the Lucky Streak Sale at Furniture and Appliance Mart inside Ashley. Millions of dollars of inventory ready to go. Save as much as 40% off in-stock appliances now. We service what we sell. Furniture and Appliance Mart inside Ashley of Madison. To stay out in front, you have to rise above the competition at every turn and earn the right to be known as a champion. Jack, how's the car? hy V gets what it takes to be the best. When it comes to fresh, sustainable seafood, they're first rate. Because they know fresh seafood. And here's a simple takeaway. If you think you can find any better, then you don't know hy V, and you don't know Jack. Since 1934, Steinhoffels has been helping families create the homes of their dreams with the largest selection of quality furniture and mattresses. Steinhoffels always has the best brands at the guaranteed lowest prices. And during Steinhoffels Best Brands Best Prices Sale, you'll take 35% off the largest selection of in-stock name brand furniture and mattresses. We have something for every style and every budget. It's the Best Brands Best Prices Sale at Steinhoffels. Relax, it's Steinhoffels. Senator Ron Johnson, you know, when I lost my husband, he made sure he reached out to me. He made sure I had everything that I need and still, you know, pick up the phone and call me if you need anything. He always says that a lot of people say things when they don't know. I said, I just wish people knew you like I knew you. So the best advice I could ever give a person is before you listen to what somebody else has to say, please get to know a person for yourself. I'm Ron Johnson and I approve this message. Feeling lucky? Everyone's a winner at Ashley's Lucky Streak Sale. We have millions of dollars of inventory in stock with savings up to 50% off. And get your scratch-off card in store for up to an extra 15% off. Plus 0% interest until 2023. Only at Ashley. A local church is doing its part for the people of Ukraine, gathering money to benefit those who need it most. According to the Dominican brothers on the ground in Poland, people need food, water, hygiene products, and because they have an orphanage there, childhood products are needed as well. They're doing everything they can here to help those thousands of miles away. And the best way we can help that is we are able to send money uh, to Poland where these things are purchased and they're brought over into the Ukraine. And then uh, and sometimes it's just basic things like bread. Well, the bread they delivered yesterday fed not only the people the Dominicans are taking care of, but also another 300 patients at a local hospital. All right, whether you drive five miles or 50 every day, one thing you, you sure need to make sure your gas you need to make sure it's full before you hit the road. And with gas prices skyrocketing, there are a few things you can do to make your fuel go the extra mile. For one, experts say make sure your tires are properly inflated. Peter Bilgo of Riverside Automotive says one of the easiest things you can do is also keep your air filters clean. If this air filter is restricted, you're cutting down the airflow into the intake manifold. And a restricted airflow, you're going to use more fuel. More tips from AAA. Use cruise control for longer distances to help maintain a constant speed and save fuel. Avoid prolonged idling, even in these chillier days. Avoid quick jackrabbit starts and hard acceleration. And slow down and drive the speed limit. Still ahead, the Red Cross will be testing blood donations for COVID-19 antibodies again as the CDC extends one of the few remaining mask mandates in the U.S. Plus, a new program is allowing people to get free antiviral pills. How you can qualify for that free medicine. And things will stay chilly this week. Milder conditions will return soon. Gary with your complete forecast after the break. It's the frozen food sale this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at hy V. Brew Pub Pizza, just $4.99. It's your churn ice cream, only $2.99. And Van de Kamp's Fish, just $4.48. Scan the QR code or check out hy for more deals. 
They are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. Well, today we're going to see one for ourselves and let you be the judge. It's called Plexiderm, and lifestyle expert Annette Figueroa is here to tell us why she says... This one is for real. This one is for real, and I'm so excited. We even have a video that the viewers can watch while you and I talk, so they can actually see how this works. And you'll notice the model has bags underneath his eyes and some sagging, and all he uses is a small amount on a clean, dry face, and that's how easy it is. All right, what's the active ingredient? Okay, so it's silicates that are minerals found in shale rock. And what it does is it tightens and lifts the appearance of bags underneath your eyes in as little as 10 minutes, no prescription and very little effort. Even watching the video, this is a real, uh, oh, no. it's a model, but it's a real guy with real bags underneath his eyes. And I did this to my father. We were at home. I had the timer on and we were screaming. Four minutes, 34 seconds, completely gone. My real true opinion is, holy words I can't say on camera. <laughs> These lines bother me. They really do. And this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It was amazing. It feels good. Feels great. Looks even better. And not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of crow's feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. So it targets all those problem areas. So this would be a daily thing or just when you want to like get rid of the bags and yeah. you would I mean, morning routine. It, it absolutely could be a daily thing, but the way you want to do it is you want to have a clean, dry face, use a small amount because it's so powerful, apply it underneath your eyes, fine line wrinkles, forehead lines. You have high school reunions, you have events you want to go to, you want to look years younger, this is it. At our $14.95 price, it's the best way to try Plexiderm and see it work for yourself after your first application. Your solution is at PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. It's the frozen food sale this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at hy V. Banquet pot pies, just 88 cents. Blue Ribbon Classics, only $4.99. And Farmland Sausage, two for just $4. Scan the QR code or check out hy deals.com for more deals. The CDC is extending its face covering requirement for airplanes, buses, and other mass transit through April 18th. The requirement, which is enforced by the TSA, had been set to expire on March 18th. It was extended to allow the public health agency time to develop new, more targeted policies. As of March 3rd, more than 90% of the U.S. population is in a location with low or medium COVID-19 community levels. That means public face masking is no longer recommended in indoor settings. The new COVID-19 test to treat program rollout is underway in the U.S. It means that if you test positive for COVID-19, you can get free antiviral medication to help treat it. Mandy Gaither has more on how the program works and where you can get the free medicine. Two COVID-19 antiviral pills are already available for free in the U.S., but getting them quickly can be challenging. These treatments work to prevent the worst outcomes of COVID-19. The new test to treat program aims to help that by allowing people to go to one place to be tested for COVID-19 and if positive, be given free antiviral pills on the spot. Hundreds of one-stop sites will open across the country this month located at local pharmacy clinics, community health centers, long-term care facilities, and veterans health centers. Certain pharmacies across the U.S., including CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart, have confirmed some of their locations are getting ready to take part in the program. Pfizer's antiviral pill is for people 12 and older. Merck's is for adults only. Anyone who tests positive in those age groups can be given the medications to take at home. The treatment works best when given within a few days of the start of symptoms. While the one-stop sites are ordering the COVID-19 antiviral medicines now, the orders have to be delivered before they can be prescribed. Patients are expected to be able to receive COVID-19 antivirals through this program later this week. To find a location taking part, there will be a test to treat website expected to launch in mid-March. The American Medical Association has voiced concerns over the program, saying a clinic might not know a patient's full medical history or medications being taken like a doctor would. Officials say that's why it is important to contact your doctor shortly after testing positive for COVID-19 to assess treatment options. The American Red Cross will once again test all blood donations for COVID-19 antibodies, plasma. From donations that have antibodies can be used as a form of treatment for COVID-19 patients. The Red Cross shared the news today saying blood supply still remains very vulnerable. They had tested all blood donations for antibodies early in the pandemic, but when infection rates went down, they stopped. 
Now it's coming back for a limited time. Anyone who donates blood to the Red Cross right now can expect antibody results in one to two weeks after their donation. Chilly temperatures the rest of the week, then things will warm up a bit. Here's Gary in complete forecast. Got to get past Saturday. After that, things really start to improve. Three things you need to know in the forecast. Look for skies to be mostly cloudy for uh, at least this evening, and then we'll see a fair amount of cloud cover uh, at least for part of the day tomorrow. So that'll keep temperatures cold, not only for tomorrow, but also through Saturday as well. Even though we'll have sunny skies on Saturday, temperatures will start out probably just above zero with wind chills as cold as 15 below zero. Then we'll see some snow showers or flurries on Saturday night as a warm front moves through. And on the other side of that warm front, spring fever arrives. Temperatures jump up to near 50 on Sunday and stay there for most of next week. High temperatures today, only lower to mid 20s across southern Wisconsin. And current temperatures are still in the lower to middle 20s because of the cloud cover. Skies clear out later on tonight. We'll see those temperatures drop off a little bit more. There have been a few flurries down toward the Illinois state line, but uh, light snow has been confined to northern Illinois and northern portions of Indiana and not affecting us. In fact, it's part of a, a pretty significant weather system with winter storm warnings in effect for parts of New Mexico and southeastern Colorado. Winter weather advisories all the way through St. Louis along the Ohio River and then winter storm watches into parts of New England as that system stays to our south. And temperatures are cold across all of the Midwest, uh, north of the Ohio River and even areas south of the Ohio River are going to cool off over the next couple of days. But the good news is this is not going to last very long. Uh, temperatures will start to warm up and the reason is that northwesterly wind flow out of Canada is funneling in the cold air here. But farther out to the west, notice a jet stream pushing to the north across the eastern Pacific Ocean. We always look for that as a sign that temperatures are starting to warm up and that's that milder air will start moving eastward by the end of the weekend. Another little cold front to our north and west across parts of North Dakota with a, a few snow flurries along it. Those will come through during the day tomorrow. Not going to amount to very much, but these temperatures that are in the teens and 20s will be very similar for tomorrow and probably Saturday as well. And on future track, you can see the skies clear out overnight. That will allow those temperatures to drop off. And then there'll be the, just a slight chance of flurries as that cold front moves through. Winds shift around to the northwest and temperatures start to fall off tomorrow afternoon. By Saturday morning, we're down into the single digits again with wind chills perhaps as cold as 5 to 15 below zero. But with sunshine on Saturday, temperatures will still be cold. Here come the clouds, maybe a few flurries Saturday night and into very early Sunday morning. And then on Sunday, those winds become more westerly and those temperatures start to warm up pretty quickly. So our forecast for tomorrow calls for partly sunny skies. There is a slight chance for a flurry. High of 28 will probably be around lunchtime and then temperatures will drop off during the afternoon. So by this time of the day, we'll be back into the upper teens and lower 20s. Saturday morning down to four above zero and a high of 23. Snow shower chance Saturday night. And then we jump up to 49 on Sunday, 50 on Monday with more clouds. But right now it looks like it'll be dry for the first part of next week. Temperatures will be in the low 60s on Wednesday and then near 60 on Thursday. Slight chance for a shower. Better chances for rain on uh, Friday and Saturday. But even that's kind of iffy. Temperature is still above normal into next weekend. And coming up in sports, Wisconsin has yet to lose back-to-back -back games this season. While the Badgers say it hasn't happened and it won't start tomorrow. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Born Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Rocks in the tree top all day long. Hopping and a bopping and a singing this song. All the little birds on J. Burns Street. Love to hear the robin going tweet, tweet, tweet. Rock and robin. <laughs> Now at Menard, save big money and get 11% off everything. Formula Shell Motor Oil provides value and performance in a trusted brand. A quart is $2.29 after 11% rebate. Attract a wide variety of birds to your feeder, including cardinals, robins, and sparrows with Enchanted Garden Wild Bird Seed. This mix contains a blend of seeds and corn. A 40-pound bag is $11.99 after 11% rebate. Get 11% off everything at Menard's. Save big money. From working out to catching up, and of course, game night, your home is the groundwork for all of life's awesome moments. This is Tom Coyle. My family and I say thank you. We're proud to have been a part of this community for 77 years. And during our 77th anniversary event, carpet installation is just $77. Coyle Carpet One Floor and Home, beautiful, made affordable. Locally owned and operated since 1945. 
Let's stand an optical choose a spokes bird. They're not your typical eye care company. I'm not your typical penguin. We're a team. There's no I in eye care. Wait. <laughs> Get two pairs of glasses plus a free eye exam, anti-glare lenses, and same-day service for only $79. What do you think? I love it. Morning. Who said that? Whoa, where did that come from? <gasps> Floating money. Funny. <laughs> Good luck out there. The ambassador of Wisconsin Agriculture turned 75. We'll see what it takes to wear the Alice in Dairyland crown and how the state's celebrating her milestone year. And we're still gearing up for a mild stretch of temperatures. That's tomorrow morning before 30 to 7. In less than 24 hours, Wisconsin will tip off their first of what they hope is three games in the Big Ten tournament. And if we know anything about this team, chances are they'll bounce back from Sunday's loss. After each loss in the regular season, the Badgers went on to win their next game. This team didn't have any losing streaks, and they credit that to their mental toughness. You know, having that next game mentality, learning from it, taking time to reflect. You know, be grateful for what happened, whether you won or lost, and then, you know, it's time to recommit and refocus and get ready for the next game. Mental toughness and, you know, just having a uh, very forget forgetful memory. Uh, you know, you lose a game. If you dwell on it, then it's going to affect the next game. You just got to put it behind you and focus on the task at hand. Sports Illustrated ranked the top 50 men's basketball players of the season. I think you know who's number one. SI tab Johnny Davis to the top of their list saying no player has meant more to his team than Davis. This comes two days after they named the Badger sophomore a first team All-American. Now Wisconsin gets the winner of Michigan State and Maryland in tomorrow's quarterfinals. Right now MSU has the lead in the first half if the, ba the Badgers split with the Spartans this season with each team winning on others home court. For just the seventh time in program history, the Wisconsin women's hockey team will face off against Clarkson. The Badgers lead the all-time series with four wins, a loss, and a tie. But in the postseason, they've split their meetings. UW lost to Clarkson in the 2017 National Championship game. And then two years later, the Badgers shut out the Golden Knights in the Frozen Four semifinals. I've played them once in my career in um, 2019. We were supposed to play them in 2020. Um, so it's kind of exciting, you know, get that rematch for 2020 and those girls that didn't get to pan out and play the rest of that season. That's one tough thing about coming into the, the end stretch is that we don't have experience playing every team here, but uh, that's what video is for. And the puck dropped not even 30 minutes ago in Boston between the two. Scoreless right now. We'll have highlights at 10. And Gary, I know you're happy today. Baseball is Baseball's back. back, yeah. I got to look forward to it. But we need some baseball weather. It doesn't seem to be here, at least for right now. Uh, Flurry's moving out of southern Wisconsin, but temperatures are in the lower 20s with wind chills in the teens. All right, Gary, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Produce Readout at 6. Have a great evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.